Hi, I'm Amber Dancy, CEO of Practical Rebel, and you are tuned in to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. Hi, I'm Robin Mayberry. I'm the CEO of Robin Mayberry Creates, and you are tuned in to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. Hi, I'm Robin Clare, and I'm the Executive Director of the Seniors Job Bank, and you are tuned in to the Ladies Power Lunch Hi, Show. Hi, I'm Megan Shelton, and I'm the CEO of Next Step Education, and you are tuned in to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. Hi, my name is Shannon Malkin Daniels, founder of Speak Success, public speaking, communication, and confidence coaching, and you're tuned in to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Pack, CEO of Envision Greatness Press, and you are listening to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. Welcome to Grow Your Business Smarter, Live Your Optimal Life. This is just introduce myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Shepard, I'm your host, and I host a women's group called Ladies Power Lunch. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Grow Your Business Smarter, Live Your Optimal Life TV show. Hi, I am your host, Dr. Davia Shepard. And in addition to hosting this amazing TV show, if I say so myself, I also host a women's group called Ladies Power Lunch. And I can hear you asking in your mind, what is Ladies Power Lunch? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Ladies Power Lunch is an amazing place where women in business come to support each other. And when I talk about women in business, I'm talking about women from all walks of life, from all walks of business, women in big business, small business, women who might be solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, women who might be in corporate life, or they might be in nonprofit. There are even some of our members who are retired and they come and they share their gifts and their talents with us. What holds us together, what keeps us you know, just together as a group is that we firmly believe in this idea that when we support each other, everybody wins. And so this idea of a rising tide lifting all boats is alive and well in our group. And we really believe that there's no problem or concern that you might have in your business or your personal development that somebody hasn't already had to deal with and probably even overcome. And so we're saying there's no need to recreate any wheels. Just come in our group, raise your hands, ask your questions, and there's going to be somebody who is going to be willing to share her gifts and talents with us. So we have this show and we invite our dear friends, our dear members from Ladies Power Lunch to come and share their gifts and talents with you. But you can have this conversation. You don't have to wait until it's showtime, folks. You can come and have this conversation every single day inside the Ladies Power Lunch group. We invite you to come join us. Just go to growsmarternotharder.com slash Facebook. All righty, on with the show. My very special guest today is Gail Petrovsky, and she is an out- she has become an outstanding friend, sure, but she's also really, really outstanding in that health and wellness space when it comes to working with her clients. She is a master coach. She has great experience being a coach for many, many years. She teaches seminars that really have transformed just so many, many lives. And she's here to share her and her talent with us today. She's also a best-selling author of the New Ladies Power Lunch anthology called Live Your Optimal Life. And so I want to say a very special congratulations to Gail on her new book and also want to welcome you to the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Dr. Davia. It's always so much fun and a pleasure to be with you. Well, I can say many, many things about you, Gail, and what you do in the world. But would you, in your own words, share with everybody what it is that you do? What is your business? Um, My business is, um, is life. Um, It's what it, it, it it is every aspect of living. Um, I'm a, I call myself a life coach. I am a life coach, a certified life coach, but I started off, um, as a, not as a transformational life coach. I started off as a counselor, a therapist, and, you know, with an MSW and all sorts of degrees from all over um, and learned different modalities um, as a master in NLP. For example, I learned from John Grinder, who was the master of neurolinguistic programming. I worked with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. So I have a lot of different experience over the last 30 years. And when I started to work, with transformation, with people and healing, I decided that um, there had to be something more than what I was taught in the buildings and from the teachers. There had to be something else there. And so I started to utilize a holistic approach so that it was more of mind, body, spirit. Also, who everybody is that walks through the door or who I'm in front of in a room 
um, I'm able to u- utilize um, my intuition, which is a gift. Um, and I allowed, I started to allow my heart and my compassion and not just my head and all the learning that I had acquired to really open up to be with people so that they could open up also and be able to see the truth that's inside of them and the magic that really is there when we allow our heart, our soul, our spirit, um, and our body to be able to have open channels of energy so that we can heal. So what I guess uh, in, in retrospect, what I'm saying is I help people heal. I support people in living their truth, in finding out who they um, truly are, not what they were told uh, growing up or their expectations from others, but to live their dreams and be able to actualize what their dreams are and be able to get rid of the roadblocks. So if that makes sense, that's really what I do. I love the way you explain it. And you know, if you ask anybody out there, hey, do you want to live your truth? Do you want to live, you know, your best possible life? They're going to say yes. But what makes somebody raise their hands and say, yes, Gail, I would like to work with you? What separates them from everybody else who kind of has an idea that they'd like to live a better life? Um, Sometimes people are not cognizant that they, that's what they want. And uh, they, let me, let me go back a little bit. There are times when people walk through my door or they call me because they're in transition. Um, And my answer to them is we're all in transition. You know, it's constant transition. So when they start to work with me, sometimes people are aware and very aware that they've they've had it. They don't want to live in this box. They want to be able to break free of that box and really be able to be all that they are, that they were born to be. Some people are aware of that and know that. And that's wonderful. That's a gift. Most people need to have some roadblocks taken away so that then they can actualize and go inside and realize that they're not living their truth from what what they really, truly want and desire in their life, but they're living someone else's expectations of themselves. So it's really twofold. Some people... um, are aware enough because they've done some work um, that that it's time for them. It's time for them to shift and be able to create a different paradigm that will bring them more joy, more health, and better relationships and abundance. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. So when you have to talk to people about living their optimal life, yeah. how do you how do you frame that? What does living your optimal life mean as you would explain it? As I would explain it, it would mean being able to deal with whatever comes across your life, whatever some of the the turmoil might be, uh, some of the obstacles, the challenges. And instead of reacting to them, Learn how to go inside, get quiet so that you can hear what it is you need to do to be able to respond with your personality so that the energy can become more alive. And then you can live and take that next step that a lot of people are afraid of. There is a fear. Um, Sometimes there's um, a defense mode, anger. Um, So we need to get rid of that so that we can be fully present. And then you can take the step into living your optimal life, the way you choose, not the way someone else chooses. Because we only have one life. So why not live it the way we need to and choose to now? I think that's that's really so very, very well said. I think a lot of the times when we talk about living our best life or living our optimal life, a lot of people might think that it's all sunshine and roses and butterflies and unicorns every single day. And perhaps many days, that is what it is. But I think for me, at least, what living your optimal life means is being able to, like my mentor, Dr. Deepak Chopra says, being able to be the eye of the hurricane, to yeah. have the things going on in your life that might not be the butterflies and the roses, but you're able to deal with it without losing your inner peace and your joy. So I, I particularly resonate with the way that you explain 
living your optimal life. So yeah. you're a new best-selling author. Congratulations. I'm very excited. Multiple. You're a multiple-time author, but this is your newest um, yes. book yes. that has come out. And folks can get a copy of Gail's new book, which she's co-authored with some other amazing co-best-selling authors. Yes. It's called Live Your Optimal Life. And you can get it at growsmarternotharder.com slash ticket. So be sure to go get your copy. What made you say yes to being a part of this Ladies Power Lunch anthology, Live Your Optimal Life? I always wanted to take um, the next step and write um, and write more. I wanted to become, um, I, I had done it. I had written a book called a woman's book, but I had co-authored it. And this is also a collaboration of magical beings coming together to voice what they need to voice. And um, I had said yes, because I had an inner knowing that it was time for me to write. Now, after, I don't know if you want me to, but after I said yes, I had a tragedy that happened as I spoke about before with you, my husband passed. And my first reaction was, I can't write this because I'm not living my optimal life. And yet I had to relook at that and decide, was I living as optimally as I could in, with everything that was transpiring? And my answer was, even through the trauma and the sadness and the grief, I was. So I chose to write a chapter that would support people going through what I was going through. So in a way, the timing of it, even though it seemed like it wasn't the right time, turned right. out to be a good time after right. all. Right. It turned out to be very healing for me to write this. And I hope it's, and I my, my I hope and I pray that people will be able to grow and resonate with the chapter facing loss, embracing courage. Yeah. You know, when we started doing the Ladies Power Lunch anthology some years ago, the intention was twofold. One, we recognize that the women who are part of our Ladies Power Lunch group have so much wisdom to share and that it would be a great vehicle to share using these anthologies. But the other piece was that through writing, many of us are also able to begin our healing process. And I think not just for you, Gail, but for so many of us who shared our stories so vulnerably in this anthology, it really, really was a healing process. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of your process. Thank you. Thank you for opening up the door so that I could walk through. Yeah, definitely it's been mutually beneficial for all of us. Yeah. So we like to think of this show as being a bit of a practical show. Yes, we do talk about a lot of personal development things and we talk a lot about spirituality sometimes. But at the end of the day, we like to give the people who tune in something that they can leave with and it's concrete, something that they can use in their lives going forward. Yeah. So I was wondering, would you be willing to share with us some of the do's and don'ts, some things that will help us to be better at living our optimal lives? Sure. Um, one of the things that you don't want to do is um, keep doing and doing and doing so much that you become on overwhelm um, and you don't even hear your inner voice or acknowledge where you're at because you're so busy um, getting to the next goal that you're actually not even living your life to the fullest. So one of the things that I do and I support people in doing is taking some quiet time every day. I could be even five minutes or 10 minutes mm -hmm. just to sit without the computer, without the television, without all of that stuff that creates static, you know, energy. And it's hard to get unplugged now. I know it is. It really is hard to get unplugged. And you and it's important because our energy really needs to be, you know, um, 
in a place of wholeness. And we don't, we can't get that with everything else, static energy around us. So to go inside and be able to either meditate, get quiet, Mm -hmm. do some breath work um, so that you can actually be with yourself in that moment. And you don't have to be worried about everything else around you. Another thing that is a real positive to do besides this is if that isn't for you, then get outside, take some big, deep breaths in fresh air and be with nature because that will also support you in being more aligned and in balanced with your soul. Of those um, examples of ways that we can live or be, do a better job of living our optimal lives, yeah. our, our viewers, they love story. They're just like me. They're superstar nosy. And so do you have any stories that you can share with us? Maybe stories of your own or stories of clients that you've worked with that have found it beneficial to unplug in the ways that you are talking about? Yeah, um, I'll use myself as an example. Um, I am a very motivated person and I, my passion is making a difference in the world. So while I'm making a difference in the world, sometimes I forget about Gail and that shows up for me in a physical manifestation where I'll either get bronchitis or I'll get hello, um, or I'll get overtired or frazzled and start to feel some anxiety. So for me, it's really important um, to tune in to my body because you can't tune into your body when you're running so fast that you can't even hear your heart beating. So it's for, it's essential for healing and wellness and being more balanced to for me to be able to check in, get quiet, and do some writing actually after I do that, to get a an internal message of wisdom that's we all have, but we have so many layers of stuff that we're doing and things that are all around us that we can't even get to it. So sometimes actualizing it in our mind, in our hearts, and then writing it is a real positive message that you'll get. I like that you talk about writing it. What I mean, what's the benefit of actually writing? How does that help? Uh, it supports it supports us in making it real and so that you can reread it afterwards and it affects not just the neurons in your brain, but it goes through the autonomic system as you're reading it and um, touches your core of who you are on a physical level, on an emotional level, and on a spiritual level. So it becomes more real. I like that. That's that's something that I, I just find that particularly interesting because I'm a bit of a journaler. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I I have to make more time for journaling, but it's definitely one of the things that is beneficial for me and um, for my process. So I really like that. Do you have any other do's and don'ts? You say you talk about unplugging. I see the value of that. You talk about going to nature. That's an amazing idea. Anything else that comes to mind for you? um, I'm a firm believer in... um, the words you speak and the thoughts you think create your present reality. Mm -hmm. So the belief system um, is part of your um, path. Uh, What you choose to say to yourself, how you choose to feel about yourself um, and the emotion that comes up um, when you even look at yourself in the mirror um, and the, and the reflection looks back. And most of the time women, I'm sure men too, yes, men, will look at themselves with criticism and judgment and send that meta message from your mind to your body. And then your day starts off on the negative. It's okay to want to transform or or lose weight or um, feel like um, you need to do something healthier, go to the gym and exercise. But if we got up every morning and looked at our own reflection, looking back at us, in our eyes, because the eyes are the mirror to the soul, um, and said something positive about ourselves. 
Hey, Gail, you know what? You have a nice smile. I like your eyes. Good morning. Now, that would be great, right? It's a great way to start. It would even be better for me if I was able to say, and I, I need to practice this too, good morning, beautiful. How are you today? <laughs> because if we start on a positive note, or even if we look at ourselves and say, today is going to be a great day, that affirmation will carry you. Have you ever had a client who, when they started out, they were in that sort of negative place and by implementing this, they have seen a turnaround in their behavior? Share that with us. Dr. Davia. every single client I've worked with, and there are many, have experienced a positive with this. So there hasn't been one person that hasn't. And that's a big statement. So I have validation that... Um, that yes, no matter where you are in your life, um, people that I have worked with have been able to have a breakthrough in how they see themselves, how they carry themselves, their health, their well-being, and who they who they want to be. They've had a breakthroughs in the positive based on speaking to themselves and talking to themselves in a consistent manner um, for a period of time. There is a shift and the, the shift is remarkable because if you look at working for 30 years with people and I really can't find one person. And if you're out there, call me um, that hasn't had a shift from saying and believing and feeling differently about the words that you're speaking to yourself. So you're saying that these people their physical surroundings, their physical life has actually transformed as a result of the way that they talk to themselves and the way that they think about things and the way their emotions are? Yes. <clears throat> there may be roadblocks and a lot of layers that you need to get to before mm -hmm. um, they're able to receive this information mm -hmm. because we block information. We block it if it sounds wah wah woo woo, or it sounds um, not concrete enough, or um, there's not enough uh, educational import behind it. We have all of these judgments that we carry, mm -hmm. especially about ourselves. So when you're working with someone like coach, and you're that coach, and I've been able to break through some of the barriers so that they can re choose to receive this information, because this information, when you get it sometimes feels very uncomfortable, very challenging, not real. This is not who I am. Um, and as and they and they deny it. Once they're able to open up and choose to receive this information and use it as an experiment. I mean, you don't have to 100% believe it, but you do have to open up the door of your mind and your heart to start receiving it. The minute that you do that, you will find within a month's time a shift in within a how month. You yeah, a month in how you perceive yourself and how you start showing up. It's remarkable. And only we can do that for ourselves. We all have that innate gift, but we have to get past our own internal bias and judgment. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Any other tips, any do's and don'ts that you think we should be plugged into? Um, <clears throat> be gentle with yourselves. Um, be kinder to yourself. We're so much kinder and more loving to everyone else around us. Mm -hmm. Start to look at yourself as a very important, special human being that has been blessed to be on this earth. Um, and you need to make a difference. It's important to make a difference with oneself before you can even do that to somebody else or help them truly. So I think that the, the lesson here is greater self-love. Um, I see people, for example, at the gym and they're nuts. I mean, they're, they're like, a gym is great. Don't get me wrong, but do it with balance. Do it with self-love. Don't do it to beat yourself up, to lose God knows how much weight. Get to a place of internal acceptance and then fine tune. It's the fine tuning in life that's what life is all about. 
I love all of those things. And for those of you who watch this show all the time, you know, I live in the gym. I stay there. <laughs> and when I'm there, the vision that I'm channeling of myself is Wonder Woman. Like she is <laughs> so powerful and so strong in the gym. That's like the vision I have of myself. But I totally get what you're saying. You're saying it's the energy that we're coming from when yeah. we're doing the things that we're doing for self-improvement. And it's also not beating ourselves up, being compassionate to ourselves in the way that we would be to others. I love that so much. You know, it brings to mind, I, I'm pulling up on my phone. I know we're trying to have this conversation <laughs> unplugged and here I am pulling up my phone, but I posted something in the Ladies Power Lunch group today um, in our book club group. So for those of you who are not yet members of Ladies Power Lunch, ladies, we have so much amazing stuff going on over there. We have book club and we're reading this book this month by a woman called Amanda Francis. And the quote that we we pulled out for today says, when I accept the way I am, then I can change. And everybody was like, mind blown on that. I just got goosebumps. Yes, because we, we, we know it intellectually, but I don't think we'd ever really thought about it. Like we have to accept ourselves first. Yeah. That's where we have to start. I am so enjoying this conversation. I feel like people need to have a place to start, a place to start doing anything because we're just sending them away and say, okay, you can live your optimal life. We are certain of it. Go do it. <laughs> <laughs> and our poor <clears throat> listeners, viewers, they are thinking to themselves, okay, but where do we start? So if you could give us a little, just one simple homework assignment, yeah. a starting point, what would that be? I think it would be to um, be able to visualize internally, if that makes sense, to be able to get quiet, get quiet inside, do some journal writing about um, what is a, what is your dream? What do you think you were born to do? And how, how, should, how do you really want to be from this point forth in your life so that you can start being the dream that is living inside but hasn't come out yet? So in other words, get quiet, do some journal writing with regards to who you are, not who you're not but who you are and who you want to be more of and what you want to have, because those dreams are not a luxury. They really are validated and a necessity. I, I love that. Really, really good homework. And of course, as you're watching this, Ladies Power Lunch members, just go over into our Facebook group and let's have a conversation about it. After you've done your journaling exercise, let's talk about it. What came up for you? What is what is it that feels alive for you right now? What sort of changes can you make today that we can move forward with? What sort of support do you need? And of course, Ladies Power Lunch is always going to be an amazing place to find networking partners, to find collaboration partners to find people who know better than we do, who can help us, support us, and guide us to our next step. Gail, this is so, so wonderful. Can you share with us any tips, tricks, any apps that you might be using right now, any books that you might be reading, podcasts you might be listening to, anything that you think might help us to move in that direction of living our optimal life? Um, I read a lot of books. Uh, I'm an avid reader. So Anything that has to do with life and movement and change and growth, I think is a wonderful way to start. Podcasts are also wonderful. Um, anybody that um, is inspirational to you or motivational to you, listen, listen while you're driving um, videos, um, because when when you hear it, it's one thing. When you see it, it's another thing. And um, And then when you read it, it becomes embedded also. So I think the more that you can um, grow uh, on a, not like a, um, I'm in school and, and I've got to read this book, but for enjoyment, 
for, uh, oh, that's inspirational. I'm going to take that from that book and I'm going to listen to this podcast. And that resonated with me. That makes a difference. It creates an internal immediate shift. So I think that the more that you can you can gather, not like a professor, but, you know, just be for enjoyment for your soul. That's what you should be reaching your hand to read or listen to. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So you heard it here first, folks. Listen, watch, read. I mean, you do all three of those things. It really, really helps with your development. Yeah. Gail, folks are going to want to reach out to you. How can they connect with you? I... They can connect with me on my email, which is gail at gailpetrowski.com. And that's P-E-T-R-O-W-S-K-Y. Or you can go to my website, which is gailpetrowski.com. Um, uh, you can Google me. Um, I'll come up on your Google. I have uh, streaming meditations that are out there that you can listen to for free that will bring you back to home um, inside. And I would love to have people reach out to me because um, I have just re re um, I've just moved my office um, to a home office, and I also will Zoom with people. So if people really want to have private sessions with me or they want to do a retreat or a workshop with me, I would love to hear from you. I'm available and to support you. Awesome. So at the end of every show, Gail, we pull a card from one of the many, many, many card decks that we have floating around here in this office. And I usually wait to see which deck is calling me. And it seems like once again, the Colette Baron Reads Enchanted Map Oracle cards have called. And so we shall answer the call and see which card wants to be heard today. And the card that came up is the one that says slow and steady. <laughs> and she looks like a butterfly, but she also looks like a snail. So that's interesting. Yeah. Metamorphosis in play. She's, she's Transformation. She's she, there's definitely something here about transformation, but yeah. let's see what it says. Because when I pulled it, it yeah. was upside down. Oh. So she says, slow and steady wins the race. Well, we knew that because we yeah. watched that one in kindergarten, right? <laughs> it says, pushing things forward impulsively will not, will not only prevent success, but potentially cause more trouble than you're prepared to handle. Moving too quickly will only yield unripe fruit with a bitter taste. Slow down, breathe, meditate. <laughs> you're not a human doing, you're a human being. Just be. Everything will work out if you can apply the brakes and become more aware of what is happening in this moment. A calm focus on the now Breathing in the beauty of your surroundings will restore your power to consciously co-create your world. All fruits ripen in their own time. Beautiful. How do you feel like this correlates with what we've been talking about today? <laughs> I can't believe you just pulled that from the ethers. I mean, it was perfect. It was so in aligned with everything we've talked about. Amazing. Just I'm amazing. Gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of it. That's this is this feels I mean, like it's exactly what we were talking about. It's unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me, Gail, because it seems to me like no matter what it is that we're talking about, the card that we pull is the absolute right one. So yeah. That's very, very interesting. Gail, thank you so much for being our guest today. Really do appreciate you being a part of our community. We appreciate you being a part of the Ladies Power Lunch Anthology, Live Your Optimal Life. And we absolutely appreciate you sharing your gifts and talents with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, you can join our group at growsmarternotharder.com slash Facebook. And you can get a copy of the Live Your Optimal Life Anthology at growsmarternotharder.com slash ticket. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. And I'll see you all on the next show. Bye, everyone.